move up towards this podium group. So right now we see Maya Voshovska ahead of Sabine Spitz and Eva Lechner. So that's the next group of three. So Catherine Pendle now finds herself between two groups. So I'm joined in the uh, commentary booth now by Simon Burney, a regular in here to give us some insight on the women's race. And I've uh, been watching here the Gunreta Dala Flesja doing very well. This is the first time we've seen her up towards the pointy end of the race since she's had the baby. And uh, it's starting to fade a little bit, but good to see her up there. She was good. She's had a good start, good first couple of laps. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to see her back at the sharp end of racing. Yeah, but an interesting, fascinating race actually between the first two because we saw them leading in uh, Peter Marisburg some four weeks ago and they've maintained the form and come to a, a quite a different track and still they're out the front. So maybe some of the women haven't done enough homework in the last uh, few weeks. It's quite interesting to see that they've maintained their form coming into this race. Yeah, I think we were talking about it in Peter Marisburg, how riders schedule their seasons and when they plan to peak and you know some riders come into the season strong, get some early season points and you might see them fade a bit. June, July and come back for the August, September, you know, World Cup Finals and World Championships. Some others start off a bit slower, you know, maybe don't have the climate in the winter to train early in the season and, uh, you know, end up good in the middle of the season and come through strong. So it's, yeah, it's different for different teams, different strategies for riders. It's, it's what makes it interesting. And uh, noticing that, uh, or I pointed out earlier in the broadcast, that uh, Ring Chun Wan has only won run, one race a year since she started racing at World Cup level, and they've always been round one, uh, except when she got, uh, I think it was round two. So she's very good at the beginning of the season. Um, she finished 15th at the World Championships last year. A lot of people said she'd disappear for two years, but she has been around. She won Offenberg in 2009. You and I were there to see that. And, uh, and then uh, 15th of the Worlds is nothing to sneeze at. It's not too bad in Canada, but definitely back on form again for this year and someone to watch going through to the next Olympics. Definitely. I think after Beijing, they seem to take a step back a little bit. And I, yeah, she, she showed up at Worlds, but it wasn't where you'd expect her to be. You'd expect her to be a podium rider when she, when she does show up. Um, it was interesting. We never really found out what happened after Beijing with that whole squad and the structure and the you had a change of, change of management in the Chinese national team and coaching and uh, some of the riders that were in Beijing. We haven't seen them again, and I think it's good that she's you know, hooked up with Specialized and uh, back on the circuit. I think it, she definitely adds a, adds a new dimension to the race, and she's very strong when she's, when she's on form. And uh, just mentioning before, she's only ranked 42 in the world because uh, she doesn't do as many races. Uh, the world ranking obviously accumulates points from all sorts of types of racing, so important for her to try and move that up a little bit, not only for the Chinese qualification, but also for her start position at the World Championships. That's right, there's no races on the Chinese domestic calendar that attract UCI points and on the UCI calendar, so national championships in China, and then uh, it, she really needs to travel to, to other races, and they just don't do that anymore. So it's See, she's the, uh, the current Asian continental champion. I gather that would carry some points. It does. After World Championships, that's a big point earner for these, some of the smaller nations that have an opportunity to race in continentals. What can you say about Julie Bressett? I mean, uh, she's a very young rider. We're seeing that the Sabine Spitz, who turns 40 after Christmas this year, and, and uh, some other the older riders still out there. She's so young, it means she's got a future of another 15 years or so. Yes, yeah, so she's, she's moved on another step from last year as well. She was a great under-23 rider last year. She's still an under-23, but she's chosen to race elite. Yeah, she's got, a, she's got a good future if she can hold it together for a few years. I was watching that section there, or actually when I walked the course yesterday and trying to observe the line A, line B, that line A was quite a tricky thing. You had to really get your rhythm right on it, not hit your cranks on the rocks. Uh, not trialsy, but definitely something that requires a lot of skill. And the other one is a bit longer, but very, very smooth. And uh, perhaps for some of these girls taking the wider line for their rhythm, it's a little bit easy because I saw Julie having to get off there. Yes. It's a, it's a tricky, it is a tricky A line. It's, it's really hard to get the balance right between A and B lines. And some organizers, uh, well, for any organizer, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge because you've got such a range of ability of riders. But I think what the organizers have tried to do here is to give uh, the, the very technically adept riders an advantage over the B line. And the, the problem is, is when it's still faster to run an A line.
than to ride the B line. And I think this one is maybe slightly in favor of, uh, of the A line still being run and be able to make an, not keep an advantage, but to uh, no disadvantage, which is, yeah, it's, you've only got to move a rock a few centimeters and it makes a huge difference to a, to a line. And I was watching some of the guys training uh, the last couple of days and, you know, the ones that can ride it, they can clean it and it's, it does make a big difference. But I think in the heat of the race, when you're, you know, heart rate's 180 and you're breathing hard, it's, uh, it's a different, uh, different challenge to training. Now, how's the wind? You just come in from outside. When I came in here, it's starting to get quite gusty. It is. It? Yeah, so right. Some of these open sections like Contour Road and the, and the back road up the, what's the one up the back called, uh, up near Jing Jingleby Summit. Jingleby, yeah. It's quite exposed up there and they've got a headwind on the start finish straight. It must be playing some sort of role. Definitely. And I think you're seeing groups and you're seeing riders sitting in a group. Uh, it's, it's really strong. The gusts are strong and it's, it's causing some problems on the course with regard to, you know, course marking and barriers and yeah. team tents and things like that. So it's, uh, yeah, hopefully it doesn't get any stronger as the day goes on. I noticed there that Catherine Pendrell, as she came through at the start of this particular lap, was encouraging Maya Wachowska to go in front to take a bit of the break on her. But now she's moved between that group of three to try and bridge the gap up to the leaders. She's out in no man's land on her own on a windy day. It's going to be a very, very tough ride for her. It try is. and bridge that gap. It's, yeah, it's always hard to bridge a gap. I think uh, the advantage of this course is so much of it. It's very twisty and turny, lots of different di changes of direction, and so much is in the forest that the, there's only two or three sections where the, the wind is an issue as far as the, the physical effort, and the start-finish straight is probably the hardest one of those. Yeah, we saw Catherine Pendrell just go through, and I think just sneaking behind the tree as the camera changed angle were the other two riders there of Sabine Spitz and Maya Wachowska before we now pick up. It should be, uh, is that uh, Lenny Byberg's in there as well? Yes, so Lenny Byberg, and is that Anna Lang? Or is it Schneider? I thought it was red and white colours of Langvard. But uh, that Danish rider doing very well, the national champion. We've seen her outside near the back end of the top 20s, but she's found herself in the top 10 at the end of uh, lap number two. We're coming around to the end lap number three, one hour now on the board, and we're going for one hour 30 today. It'll be closer to the to the limit, I think, today. I think it'll be sort of between 140, 145 for the women. The limits for them is 145, so I think it's just going to be sneak inside that. Right, we're trying to do some calculations. We'll do that a bit later on for the men's race on the average speed. The fastest race in the last two years has been here in Dolby where the men average 22 kilometres an hour. And we'll be curious to see if that speed has gone up or whether the wind's had a factor or the shorter race distance or whatever. But we'll see if it manages to be one of the fastest races uh, because it does have the climbs out the back, but generally it's very, very flat and fast in some sections. And so you it can is, get yeah. the speed up. Yes, it's a, it's a good course for kind of keeping speed. It flows quite nicely. There's a, a couple of severe climbs, but they're uh, relatively short. I guess now we can't have super long climbs in, in mountain bike races with the shorter courses, but the, the, the two climbs on here are definitely challenging and they definitely make a difference to the, uh, you know, it's a good place to, to make an attack or to try and save some energy if you're sitting in a group. They're, they're definitely decisive climbs. Speaking, speaking to the team manager of Topic Ergon uh, last night, obviously the problem they have with Irena Kalentieva not being able to get her visa paperwork sorted for this race. But also talking about the general change in World Cup racing, going to shorter, more compact courses. And uh, just is that a jacket that's just fallen down on the track there? Uh, but it's um, something that he says doesn't actually suit his riders. But as a as an investor in the sport and as a spectator, he's liking the trend of where we're going with this, of making it more exciting and faster. And, uh, and I guess we've got to do that in order to remain attractive and, uh, and appealing to all the other sports that are out there. That's right, there's a lot of sports trying to get the same TV time and the same marketing and the same sponsorship. And it's, it's just trying to kind of keep the sport moving forward. And <laughs> whenever there's changes, some people like it, some people don't. And change is always uncomfortable. And it's, uh, you know, I think if we look back a few years, mountain biking was a lot different and there's been a few changes over the years and it's, it's not the same sport as it was in the 90s from a, a World Cup point of view you know we don't have the three hour 20 races at Plymouth anymore and the uh, you know the big 10 12 kilometer laps where which weren't great for television coverage and they were hard for spectators to get a feel for what's going on I think here you know of course like this spectators can kind of dash from one part side to the other quite easily within a lap and see different uh, different sections and I think, you know, new events like uh, like Friday night's Eliminator race in the town, it's just adding another short, dynamic, good for TV, good for the crowds. Uh, and it just gives the teams and the sponsors another another bit of bang for the buck in, uh, over a World Cup weekend. 
We've just seen our leaders come through and finish uh, the end of lap number three, heading out with uh, two to go. And uh, some ominous grey clouds there in the background above the Welcome to Yorkshire sign. And I think uh, we could be in for some blustery, uh, rainy sort of gusts that come through. They said that if it did rain, it wouldn't rain very long, that the wind would blow it through. But uh, I think we're on for some rain at some point today. It was raining as you were calling the riders up to the line, and uh, then it was bright sunny. Yeah, it's one of the, uh, the great advantages of living on an island. The weather changes minute to minute. So. I don't, I don't think it'll rain for long today if it does. And if it does, it won't have much impact. So On the course, none at all, no. So there we see our leaders come through. They've actually extended the lead by another 15 seconds over Catherine Pendrell. So it's a 47-second lead uh, between the leaders and Catherine Pendrell in third, and then another 12 seconds back to Spitz for Schofska. And it looks like Anna Langvard, who's riding just ahead of Byberg now, who's with Lechner. So uh, Langvard now moving up into sixth place. That's easily her best ever result, the Danish rider. Carrying plate number 13 from South Africa, she's going to move up into possibly being called up to the front row next race if she's lucky. So uh, that's a great step up for the Danish rider. I'm not quite sure who she rides for. Um, she's riding for Fuji Eastern. It's not a UCI registered team. It's a, I think it's a, it's a Scandinavian based based right. team. I know she was looking for sponsor or looking for a team uh, after World Championships last year, and I guess she's put her own deal together. I've seen a couple of the guys, Scandinavian guys, in the same uh, jersey. So. Right, OK, Sponsor. well, that's a yeah. great result for what is essentially a, an independent rider. And uh, we can see now that Natalie Schneider has come through in ninth. Orakova's moved up now to 10th from 13th. Annie Last having a great ride today, sitting there in 11th. And um, early on, it looked like she was really trying to get on the wheel of Julie Bresset in the first part of the first lap. And she's really got to do that if she wants to sort of make a bit of a stance for the World Championships in under 23, is to rattle Bresset a little bit and say, you haven't got this all to yourself. And it's always different when you start a World Championship and all of the other riders are out of the, out of the factor of, of being in there, mixing it up with you. You're there. You've got your target set right beside you, sitting with you on the line. You never know, Annie Lars could have a really good shot at the World Championship this year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she was second last year, um, you know, behind a rider that's moved into elite. So there was, uh, there's everything to play for this year for Annie. And I think, again, you know, with the with the London Olympics next year to look forward to, she's she's on an upward trajectory as far as her performance goes. And I think you know, I think she can she can target a a podium at the at the World Championships and uh, and what's her background Simon how did she get into the sport her father races bikes or yeah a, a dad races a brother's uh, brother races cyclocross he's now on a on a UCI road team in Great Britain um, but she kind of came through the through the ranks she was kind of started off as a cyclocross rider and a, and a mountain bike rider and then she came through the British cycling sort of talent system and the sort of the, the development squad that, that Phil Dixon's got in place as a, as a junior and she's yeah, it's, it's nice. They don't work with a lot of riders, but the ones they work with, they, there's, there's an awful lot of time spent on them. So it's a good development program. There's not a lot of young riders in Great Britain, you know, trying to trying to make it on the world scene. So there's not a big pool to choose from. But uh, Phil does a good job with the riders he's got. And um, Annie, Annie and uh, a couple of the under 23 guys that raced yesterday, uh, kind of testament to, to what's been going on the last couple of years. So we see now that uh, we've had 22 riders come through. Shafran, it's in uh, 22nd. And it looks like uh, Katayama from Japan. Uh, and she's on the specialized, I believe she's one of the uh, Japanese specialized riders coming through in 23rd place. And uh, Alexander Engen from Sweden now dropping back to uh, 25th. Georgia Gould's moved up another couple of spots from 19th to 16th and starting to get into touch with uh, Gunarina Dalla Flesia. But uh, Sabrina Eno from France has been a bit of a mover as well, up from 17th to 14th, and she's uh, got a chance now getting onto the back of the Emily Batty, Murray Ellen Fremont, and Annie Last train. We saw those three go through, but we see now Ring Cheng One has put another bit of a gap on this section through here, coming up towards uh, Worry Gill, and uh, she likes to do that through this section, but it's a bit more than normal. So uh, it looks like uh, Katarina Nash has had a problem as well. We saw her come through in the top 10 a little while ago, and it seems like she's disappeared off our scoreboard. And, uh, well, that's a big problem for Katarina Nash because she was sitting in seventh place. Now, it might just be a technical problem, a puncture, and she's running around to the feed zone. We might be able to pick that up in the, uh, the start-finish arena because... Uh, and she'd done a good ride because she 43rd on the grid, so she'd moved through from the 40s into that top 10 position, and she's obviously had another issue yeah. this... She had a massive start, actually. She picked up uh, nearly 30 places in the start loop. So she had a massive start, got up to 16th, and, uh, well, now we see her back. Still not come through in 34th place. So big disappointment there for Valdek and his crew. And uh, you see now Esther Zeus is trying to make up some places after her mechanical. She dropped back to 34th. 
back up to 29th now. Leah Davison again off a 79 start position, moved almost into the top 30 there. She's moving forward nicely. She's been the uh, the revelation of the US domestic races so far this season at the Pro XCTs and uh, Sea Otter, and she's been podiuming at those races, and I think this is her first World Cup season for a, for a few years. Right, and she, she rides for Specialized as she's well? She's on a Specialized yeah. US team, yeah. Right, and it yeah. uh, looks like um, 